So this is Barley. He's one of the working dogs with Working Dogs for Conservation, and he's a rescued Border Collie originally from Denver, Colorado. Dogs like Barley, Lily, Let's go find more. and Jax could one day have a key role in the Arizona Game and Fish Department's efforts to bring black-footed ferrets back from the brink of extinction. They're just a particularly difficult species to study. They're solitary, they're rare, they live underground. It's just really hard to figure out where they are and how they're doing, and hopefully dogs can help us with that. The dogs are being tested in the Aubrey Valley near Seligman, Arizona. This is where Game and Fish has been trying to establish a self-sustaining population of black-footed ferrets since 1996. It's a good spot because there's an abundance of prairie dogs, the ferrets' main source of food. Game and Fish routinely releases captive-born ferrets in the area to boost their numbers and it does its best to closely monitor the population. That isn't easy because black-footed ferrets are nocturnal, so the best time to see them is at night. We're shining lights out the window or keeping our headlights on and we're looking for eye shine. Volunteers help Game and Fish search for ferrets with spotlights. Unfortunately, spotlighters have been seeing fewer and fewer ferrets in recent years. The frustrating part is not knowing what's going on. If we had a definitive answer, then we could probably solve the problem, but it's just the not knowing. We're doing more disease surveillance, trying to see if it might be disease. It might also be predators, or it could be that ferrets are moving into areas where they're simply harder to find. We're doing a lot more research now because our population's been steadily declining, and we're trying to figure out why. Recently released ferrets have been wearing radio collars so biologists can track their movements with telemetry. It's a great opportunity to test the dog's ferret finding skills. Jack's this way, come on. So we've got these detection dogs that are trained to sniff out the scent of black-footed ferrets. And then because the ferrets are radio collared, we can double check the dog's work. Let's go find more. This is still in research and development mode, uh, so we're testing out how well the dogs do. Amy Hurt is a co-founder of Working Dogs for Conservation. And we're a nonprofit organization that works with conservation detection dogs around the world. Uh, we work on threatened and endangered species, invasive species, um, and law enforcement, like wildlife crime uh, poachers and, and that sort of thing. You ready to go, buddy? The ferret study is a collaboration with the Wildlife Ecology Institute, on, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and Arizona Game and Fish. Good boy. Okay, we have a wind coming from the south, so I'm going to walk my eastern edge up to the other end of my area and then work into the wind. Come on this way, Lil. The dogs have had success finding black-footed ferrets in Wyoming, but telemetry could take the research to another level. Previously, researchers had to rely on spotlighters and cameras at burrows to confirm what their dogs had found. Now they can get faster feedback by testing the dogs in areas where ferrets were located with telemetry the night before. Oh, yeah, those are eyes. And the point is that we're developing a probability of detection. When we know there is a ferret in a burrow, how often can the dog smell that ferret and tell us about that? Kayla's dog, Barley, is a rookie when it comes to finding ferrets. He's still very much so in training. Check here. Good boy. Barley is currently trained on the scat of black-footed ferrets, um, and ultimately we're planning on transitioning him to finding the actual ferrets themselves. Did you get it? You did, good job. When a dog is successful, it's rewarded with a toy and some playtime. We throw um, a pretty big party, really, especially for our rookie dogs because they really need a lot of encouragement. Um, and yeah, his favorite thing in the world is a, is a ball. So it's all a game to the dogs. They love the searching. Come on, Jax. Jax and his handler, Lauren, are searching a small five acre plot that was previously searched with telemetry. When Jax sits or lies down at a burrow, he's signaling that he senses a ferret. 
Lauren doesn't know if the telemetry team found one here until she checks her GPS. We can switch over to a different screen on our GPS, which shows a small radius around where the ferret is known to be. It turns out this is not a marked burrow, but Jax seems certain there's a ferret here, and he could be right. A different ferret might have moved in or left fresh scent here sometime during the night. Last year in, in Wyoming, we had the opportunity to, our dog picked a burrow, spotlighters had already searched that area. They didn't detect any ferrets in that area. We put cameras up on that burrow and they got 1,200 photos of a ferret and, and two kits that she had. Kind of just never give up hope because ferrets can pop up anywhere. In addition to searching small areas burrow by burrow, researchers are also testing the dogs at an operational scale, covering about 300 acres at a time. We're going to make uh, broad sweeps through the area and see if we find uh, little hot spots of ferret activity. Finding those hot spots during the day could help Game and Fish get better results at night by focusing its spotlighting efforts on areas where ferrets are most likely to be found. And the hope is that we're going to find out that the dogs are actually really good at this and then in the future we can do this in areas where the ferrets aren't radio collared and we can help find these really elusive rare mammals. Jax, this way. After testing the dogs in Arizona for three weeks, here's what we know. When searching hundreds of acres at about an acre a minute, the dogs were able to sniff out a ferret 90% of the time. And they had a 97% success rate identifying burrows where a ferret was known to be present the night before. So yeah, we're hoping that it works out and then eventually that just could be another tool that we have to survey for them a tool that could help game and fish conserve and protect this endangered species.